Hi everyone, uh, here is Ali Reza Terakhshesh from ArcMotion Studio and uh, today we are going to model a, a pavilion designed by Gang Studio which is located in Lincoln Park Zoo in Chicago, Illinois and uh, as we see in the picture uh, the, the main structure has a wavy form uh, which is uh, made out of uh, wood or plank wood and uh, there is a shading structure that are positioned above it. So let's jump in Cinema 4D and try to model it. So here we are in Cinema 4D. Firstly, I'm going to try to model the wavy uh, wood structure, the main structure. And for that, I'm going to begin with a formula object. Okay. Firstly, I'm going to position it on the XZ direction like this. And there are two main parameters for the uh, formula object that uh, we should pay attention to. First is the amplitude of the wave and uh, the second one is the period of the wave. So uh, if I want to show you better, uh, the amplitude of the wave, the sinus wave here, is measured by this distance, this is the amplitude, and in the formula object, the related uh, variable is this one. And for the period of the sinus wave, we mean this distance, this is the period of the wave, and this, is, this variable is responsible for that. For example, if I double the variable to 200, you see we have a longer sinus wave before. And even if I, for example, instead of 100, I in, put uh, 20, you see we have a narrower uh, sinus wave. This is the first thing we should know about. So to begin with, I'm staying with the 220 uh, for the uh, amplitude, and I reset the uh, period, period to 100 again. OK. Then I'm going to add a, a symmetry and uh, position the formula under the symmetry. OK. And for the formula, I need to reposition it. I'm going to uh, axis mode, and I'm going to change the axis. Firstly, we should uh, pay attention. As you see here, it doesn't work because uh, the mirror plane is not correct. So I need the mirror plane to be stationed at x, y direction. So I'm entering x, y. OK, now when I move the z, the z axis, you see that we have to change. OK, firstly, I'm going to deactivate the snap. I don't need it now. And as we here enter the uh, amplitude 20 for the amplitude, so I need to I move the z axis also 20. OK, so that we, the joint attach uh, here together. OK, and now the other thing is t min and t max. I'm starting with t max min as 0 to begin it's a 0. And this t max, uh, I will increase it to something like 7, 8, 9 for now. And as you see, the uh, resolution of the speed lines is very bad. It's because the samples is too low. We have the sample C is 20. I'm going to increase it to 250. And now you see we have a smoother uh, sinus wave. And uh, as we see in the picture, uh, which one should, OK? We see that at the end of the uh, structure, the two uh, patterns, uh, I mean, the two lines uh, get together here. But here we don't have, okay? So the problem is the formula here, because it is a sinus formula. Instead of sinus formula, I'm going to change it to uh, a sinus formula. And as you see, the two split lines here join it together at the beginning. And uh, next, uh, I want to know how many of these holes or the B holes I need at all. 
Uh, so in the picture, I refer to the picture again. And here, as we see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, B-holes. Okay? So to get that, uh, I'm going to increase the uh, T-max to get it. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, this is the six uh, B-hole that we need. And the secondly, I want to know uh, how much is exactly, of almost, uh, how much is the uh, length of this uh, structure uh, to uh, get a feeling and get to uh, almost accurate result here. So uh, for that, I'm thinking the segment of this structure is this half circle, and the radius, I think it is almost three and a half or four meter. I will go with four meter for, for, for now. So to understand how much should I get, enter for the period uh, of the uh, period that defines the length of the structure, uh, I'm going to need a circle with the same radius. So I'm entering the radius 400. Okay. And temporary, I'm going to uh, make the formula invisible. And so, so what we have here is a circle with 400, 400 centimeter or four meter radius. And I'm going to refer to doodle. And what we need now is exactly this distance. Okay. And how we get that is a simple. We know it all. This is the uh, half of the circle's perimeter. So the perimeter of the circle is uh, 2 multiply pi constant pi multiply radius. Okay, so the radius is 400. So 2 multiply uh, the constant is 314 and the radius is 400. So let's bring the calculator here. So we need 2 multiply 314 multiply 400. Okay. This is 2. Uh, 1,512 centimeters this is the perimeter of the whole circle, but we need just half of it. So I'm going to divide it through 2. So it is 1,256. 1,256 centimeters. Okay? But uh, we don't need to be exact this one, because surely we don't know the exact radius of the uh, of the pavilion. So I'm going for that one to uh, see how where we get. I'm going to delete the doodle and the circle and I'm going to unhide the uh, symmetry. And for uh, now I'm going to make a cube. And in x direction I'm going to enter the values we had. So one, two, five, six. Going to top view. And now I'm going to move the cube. Okay, this is the exact amount. This is exact. So now uh, we see that you see you see that the distance is completely correct, and the, these two parts we don't need to care about them at all because there are some uh, bases. There are two bases joining this area to connect the structure to the um, floor. Actually, I mean uh, in the building in the picture. I mean this these two, yeah? We should add them to, to the structure. So I let this, uh, this two area free uh, for that manner. So, so now we see that the formula, the uh, period is 100 is just okay, okay? So I can now just delete the cube. We don't need it anymore. And so, so far what we have here, is the uh, speed line that defines the structure, the main structure. So let's go further uh, and uh, try to sweep it. And for that, I need a rectangle as a base segment. And I'm going with uh, 10 and 40. Yes. And I'm going to, this is symmetry. And there's a trick uh, I want to mention, maybe you may know or may not. 
But if you hold, the, if you select an object, for example, symmetry, it is positioned here. You see? Sorry, I go to. This is positioned here in this position. I want the sweep object, the new sweep object, to be positioned exactly here from the beginning. If I just make a sweep object, okay, you see that the coordinate is on 0, 0, volt 0, 0. Okay, I don't want that. I'm going to delete it. And now, by, by selecting the symmetry and holding the control key on the keyboard, and now when I make a new sweep a generator, you see that the sweep object is generated exactly in the coordinate where the symmetry is. Yes, and that helps in many situations. So now I'm going to drag these two beneath the sweep object, and uh, I need maybe to change the direction of the rectangle to get the axis correctly. So the good thing about Cinema 4D is that you can go so much with the, with the work without to uh, explode this. So uh, all can be just parametrical. For example, if I now, uh, in the middle of modeling, I see that the formula is not correct and I need to change it, I can just come here and change it, for example, 100 You see, everything will be uh, reloaded and will be updated in an instant. So this is a good feature of Cinema 4D that I mostly like. And uh, OK, now we have done with the sweep. Now uh, I need to rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to activate the axis. And now I'm going to rotate it for 90 degrees. So and add the bend deformer. I make a null and put bend deformer and the sweep as a child of the null. And now I need to adjust the size of the bend with my object so that it bends correctly. Okay. So for that, I'm going to go to my other views. Display. Uh, let's make this correct first. Left and top. Let's stop. Okay. Now I need to adjust the size of the bend. Uh, for this, uh, ips, for the y, uh, which is this size. I'm going to, going to enter the, the distance that I got from the formula, the parameter formula. Like this, I'm going to move it up so that it covers the entire model. Okay. And now for the other axis, I'm going to use the, okay, not this one, but this one. Great. Okay. I'm in the 250, yes. So for the position, if I want to be exactly in the middle, I can just uh, simply come here and enter 256 div um, divided through 2. So now I'm just in the middle of this format. Or maybe not, there's some variation here. Okay, now it's okay. And now I can uh, uh, I make a mode to the unlimited and rotate it to 100 degrees. Something like that. Okay, so the main structure is done here as an element. So I'm going to change it uh, structure or let's say wood structure element, element, element. Okay. Now what I need is to clone it. So again, I'm going to hold the, select the wood structure element, hold the control key on the keyboard and select the clone. I'm making clone exactly in the same position. And now this should be linear, but it's not in the right direction at all. So I'm going to bring it higher so I see it better. So now I'm going to zero it out in the y direction, and instead I'm going to increase in z direction. 
So let's see how much we need. I think 80 should be fine here. And uh, now we need the number of these elements. So we go back to our pictures again. This one. Okay. We see we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 of these elements. So for the cloner, I'm just adding, entering the 12, or not 125, 12. So, and uh, now we see that we have, for each of these elements, we have one uh, deformer, okay? This is not optimized. Okay, we have done this, but I don't, uh, I think we have to, it's better to change it. It's not, it's not a problem, but uh, it's better to have a clean area of work instead of having too many unnecessary objects. So for that, I'm going to bring just uh, bring out the band deformer here, okay? And now I'm going to make another node, and I name it main structure. Main root structure. I'm adding the cloner and the band beneath. So we have one deform deformer deforming the whole of So instead of deforming each element separately, I'm uh, making the cloner, yes, and I'm deforming all at once. So it is cleaner at the end. So until now, we are finished uh, with the uh, main uh, wood structure. And now we are going to begin to model and create the shading panels that are covering the uh, pavilion. So for the shading panels that covers the uh, these holes, uh, if we look at closely, we see that uh, there are uh, <clears throat> some separations here. So what I'm going going to do is to extract the spill lines on the edge of the structure, the main structure that we had here. Okay. And I'm going to create these other spin lines out of it, and I'm going to loft between them. So let's do that in Cinema 4D. So first, I'm going to unbend this to get back to our first and primitive result. And now I'm going to uh, go to our wood structure here. I'm going to make a copy of it. And I'm going to hide out the I'm going to hide out the main structure. So here I'm going to cap and check the three single object and now I'm going to explode. Okay. Now I'm going to line mode and I'm going to make a loop cut with the shortcut KL, something like I'm giving the value, the distance 8. And I'm going to do the same here. Not this one. OK, I'm, going, I'm giving the same value 8. So now I'm going to uh, right view. And I'm clicking the shortcut V to get to this screen select and path select selection. I'm going to select uh, the path. Not this one. Okay, I think I should go to the other two instead of right, I should go to the left. Okay, now I have access to this one. So let's try this one. Better. So I'm going to select the C line that I need. Okay. And this one as well. And I'm going to make edge to spill line, drag it out, 
and then verify the and uh, modify the point. We'll be almost in the uh, intersection. Okay. And also the other side, I need the last point, which is this one, and move it to the intersection between these two uh, lines that I added recently. Great. Now I'm going to just delete this one. And at last, I have this curve, this uh, split line as a curve. I'm going to now uh, go to object mode. I'm going to uh, access mode and move. And also, I'm going to enable the snap and move the origin of the axis to the bottom of the uh, spill line. And secondly, as you see, the axis of the spill line is not the same with the world axis. So, to get a better result and uh, and uh, avoid the confusion, I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees like this to get the same axis, an object and the world axis. Okay, and now I'm going to move graph by holding the control key and selecting the, uh, the speed line. I'm going to create a cloner and put this speed line. Beneath it, so we have a linear uh, interpol a linear copy iteration of the spline. But I don't need a linear, but I need a radius. And the radius I want it to be zero. And the plane I want the yeah, x z axis. And now we see we have this uh, onion like uh, spin lines that forming an onion and stretched onion, let us say. But I just need half of it. So I don't need uh, all as a 300 degree. So I'm going to add 180 or 225 minus 225 to get the other direction. And the number is 5 is correct. So as you see here, we have here also five speed lines, many speed lines. So one, two, three, four, five. Like, okay. And now what I need is a loft, uh, a loft, uh, what do you say, generator. I'm going to get down and I bring the cloner beneath. It. And you see here, I will get a loft, a smooth loft between the speed lines that we have, okay? But we don't need such a smoothness in our uh, structure, in our shading. Because as you see here, we don't have also this smoothness here either. So we have to change it so that we have a strictly we see our speed lines. Okay. So for that, I'm going to loft. Firstly, I'm going to check create single object. And in object mode, I'm I'm going to decrease the subdivision to 20. Okay. And here I'm going to two. I don't need any. And now we see we have minimized the segments, but still the interpolation is a, as a curve, yes? But we don't need it as a curve. We just need a linear interpolation between the C lines. So for that matter, I'm going to linear interpolation, and I'm checking it. And so we see that the interpolation between the C lines is linear. It's not as a curve anymore. So exactly what we want. And now I'm going to unhide the rest. And you see that the uh, onion form is on the right place and has the right form. So let's, uh, and now that it's done, I can just simply uh, explode it, bring it out, and I'm going to get rid of the lock. Okay, and the position of the axis is also correct. Now what we need to do is to multiple and iterate this on the surface area here. Okay, 
So let's first rename it from cloner to, um, I name it Pneumatic. 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 It reminds me of pneumatic structures, I think. So, now uh, I'm selecting the pneumatic element, and I'm by holding the control key, I'm going to more graph and make another cloner. Okay, I rename it to pneumatics, and put the pneumatic object beneath it, but this time, instead of linear or radial, I'm going to honeycomb. We get something like, okay, firstly, it doesn't look correct, so firstly, I'm going to change the direction, the x direction. So I have the right direction now, and we are uh, going with the count. So the y, the width count controls the width, and the height count controls the height. So let's go with the height. Let's see how many heights we have. So as we see here in the picture, let me bring it on again, and this one, we see that the, these holes are not covered with the panel. It begins after this. It's the same to the other side, side as well. So we don't have in this area, in these holes, and in these ones, we don't have any uh, pneumatic object. So the count begins from here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm entering the nine for height. And so in this direction, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So I'm giving it 23. Okay. Now I'm moving the object. Almost the middle. Okay. And now I'm going to change the size. Let's, let's put it almost in the right position. It's almost okay. And now the size on this 40 in it's correct. And now I'm decreasing this as well. Let's see what we get. Okay, as you see, we need to change. This is a bit uh, pick and tweak between the surfaces. So let's bring it to the right position. Here. Okay. As we see here, we need a, an extra element in this side. So I'm going to increase it instead of 23 to 24. Okay. And the head is, I give it 200. See if it's okay. Let's see if it's okay now. And I'm trying to put the elements on the right position. Okay. They look almost okay here, as I see. Now, if, uh, when, you, when we look closely, there are some of these objects that are uh, not needed. So one, two, three, four, five. 
to delete this, I'm going to more graph and uh, I'm going to more graph selection and I'm going to select these objects and I'm going to get more graph and select height select. So I get rid of the uh, unnecessary uh, panel. Okay. Now let's uh, make a null. I'm putting the these pneumatics and this selection here. Yeah, selection. This is an effector that worked for us. And now I'm going to name it pneumatics. Noi. Okay. Now that the pneumatics are also done, just I need to bring it down to the main um, object. So main, instead of main wood structure, I'm going to rename it gang, gang, love you. Okay. And now I'm going to activate the bend. And as you see here, everything has bended together and we get the wanted result. And the position of the pneumatics and the structure are completely okay and correct. So what is now uh, still need to be done is to model the bases that uh, connect the structure the pavilion and connected to the floor if i may show you in the picture i mean this part that we have here okay for that first i'm going to make a floor i'm making it plain as a floor and i'm going to rescale it so i have a better feeling as a floor here okay and the rest I'm going to move it up a bit to make place for this base structure. Okay. As we had this uh, deformer, should be the size that we want. So this is on zero, on both sides. So it should be. Okay, and enough. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a cube and I'm going to resize it 10, 10, 2. I'm going to move it up and position it almost beneath the structure on one, on one side. Like this. I'm going to center it and resize it. On something like even more. Okay. Now I'm going to explode this and going to air to surface mode. I'm selecting the bottom part. First, let's uh, hide the name. And now I'm going to scale it down. Like now by holding the control key, I'm making a cylinder. And I orientation, I make it to plus Z, plus Z. And for this uh, height, I'm going to 10. And the radius, I'm going to decrease it to, I think, 5. Okay, 10 is much, I'm going to 5. 5 looks okay. But I need to slice it to minus 180. And object the subdivision, I don't need that much. 24 should be enough. And I'm now positioning it in the right place here. And I'm exploding. Again, I'm going to surface smooth, select this 
areas, okay, as we see the uh, normals are reversed. So I'm simply select all the surfaces and uh, I reverse the normal. I'm activating the plane. Now I'm going to uh, extrude it down. Okay, now I'm going to shortcut E for scale. Here it's, it's the scale. And now uh, if I scale it in this direction, you see we don't get the nice result in this area. Yeah? So to solve this, I'm going to scale, but I'm enabling the soft selection. Let's see how much higher it is. Let's increase this value to 25 or maybe more, 30. Okay, and now I'm scaling and you see that the others are softly scaled. Okay, this should be enough. Now I'm deactivating the uh, soft selection. Okay, now I'm selecting the cylinder. I'm going to object mode and controlling the control key. And again, I'm making another scene. I make it again to the Z direction, uh, decrease the height and the radius. Okay, so something like three. And now I'm decreasing the segments to six. Three is too much, two and a half maybe. No, not this one. Ten is too much. Maybe go for seven. Yeah, this was nice. Now it looks nice. Okay. Now I'm going to put these three elements in a null with shortcut Alt G. Okay. If you don't know the shortcut, you can simply come here and make a null and drag this. Okay. And I name it base. Now what I need is to reposition the axis here. So I'm activating the snap point and activating the uh, an axis. And I'm moving this edge of the uh, form that we had. Like, okay. Now I'm going to activate this and I deactivate the snap. And by holding the control key, I'm going to move graph and create a move graph cloner. And putting the base beneath it. And instead of linear, instead of uh, in, uh, iterate it in linear in uh, y direction, I'm going to iterate it in z direction. As before, I think 80 should be the right value. And we need, of course, 12 of them. Okay. Well done. Okay. Now for the other side, there are different approaches. One is that I can change the cloner from uh, being linear to grid array. Or I can make simply a, a symmetry object and make it as a symmetry to the other side. But there is a lot of tweak and tweaks in these two uh, uh, solutions. So for me, I think the simpler solution is to go traditional way. I'm going just to copy this cloner, okay? And I'm going to drag it the other side. I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees, and I move it to the right spot. By activating the snap point, I bring it to here. Okay. And now it's done. I can just simply rename it, for example, uh, base left, base this right, and the other one, I name it base left. Base. And I put both in the in a null, and I name it base. So at the end we have two nulls. One is the gang pavilion here, 
which is uh, used, which has used the bent deformer, and the other is base. Okay. And now what I can do is to make another line null. I can do uh, make another null, null and rename it to gang pavilion. Okay, it seems I delete it. <laughs> okay, so rename it uh, gang pavilion. Okay, so re let's rename this one to uh, structure and put both in the gang of like to see if the uh, dimension and the size of the pavilion is uh, accurate i just use a figure here puppet here i'm, considering, I'm uh, deactivating the snap point and I just compared the puppet with the picture that we had here. Let's zoom out. And as we see here, this, well, as we see here, they have almost the same size. So the size of the personage here and the size of um, uh, puppet here and in relation with the structure is almost the same. So I assume that this should be the right size. And now we are done with the modeling of this uh, pavilion. Okay, in this phase, uh, our tutorial is uh, finished. I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial and uh, I'll be glad to see your opinion and comments uh, about the tutorial. And uh, you should know that uh, your comments and feedback means a lot to us and helps us to make a better tutorial in futures. And also um, click the like button if you like the tutorial or dislike button if you didn't like the tutorial and subscribe to our channel uh, to get informed about uh, our future tutorials that we put here. And I uh, hope to see you in other uh, future tutorials and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and have a good time.